It's easy to assume that everyone in Africa would champion the continent's self-reliance and support local production and manufacturing. However, reality paints a different picture. Aliko Dangote, founder of the Dangote Group, has exposed startling obstacles faced while constructing his 19 billion US dollar refinery project in Lagos. He accused powerful local and international criminal syndicates of trying to sabotage the ambitious endeavor. Speaking at the Afri Exim Bank annual meeting, Dangote likened these challenges to fighting a formidable mafia, one he asserted is even more powerful than infamous drug cartels. Before we dive into our topic today, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel and ringing the bell to be notified about all our exciting future videos. Africa's wealthiest industrial tycoon, renowned for his unyielding determination, recounted the relentless tactics deployed by these oil mafia organizations to thwart his refinery project. The country, the uh, sub-region and also the continent, sub-Saharan Africa, need this refinery and I think uh, you know so you expect them to fight through uh, non-supply of uh, crude non-purchase of the product but I think it's all temporary you know we'll get there did you price in the fighting back did you think that was going to happen but I didn't pri well I, I, I knew that there would be a fight but I didn't know that uh, you know the mafia in oil they are stronger than mafia in drugs <laughs> Just to repeat so, that, mafia and oil are stronger than the mafia and drugs. I can tell Is you that a that fact? I, yes, it's a fact. Did because you know you the see, mafia and oil existed before you got into this? Uh, I know that, you know, yes, they existed, but not as strong as uh, the way that I've uh, faced them. You know, I mean, they're, they're, they're very strong. Is this a global mafia? Is it Both. Is, is it local mafia? There's a local one, there's a global one, so it's all mixed up. It's and, all mixed up. It's a mix, and then did they try and sabotage you in any they point? Tried, they tried all sorts. But you know, like what I told you in our interview, I told you that, you know, I'm uh, a person that I've been fighting all my life. You know, so I think it's part of my life to fight. Mm. <laughs> and you've won this fight, clearly. Have you won this fight? Is it over? I think eventually we won't. We will we'll def we'll end up winning. You know why? Because the population and the government will be on our side. Because what you are doing is right. You know, I, there's one thing that I get concerned about when I hear things like the oil mafia or the international um, traders or whatever may, may be trying to interfere with Africa industrializing. It's not just your, with your oil refinery. You know, it's a lot of other, it's a lot of other industries that get pushed back there. You know, and I ask this question, I think you're the best person to ask. Does the world that is benefiting from quality raw commodities want the continent to truly industrialize, where you move industriali uh, industrialization yeah. into Africa. And how much pushback have you really seen on this path and journey? Well, there is a quite a pushback. Um, first of all, you have heard what uh, Jeffrey Sachs said. Mm. What he said, you know, is that I don't believe if the West want us to progress in terms of industrialization, Industrialization is something that is the basic that we need. We need to produce what we consume. Yeah. But I don't think if there's any support coming from the West. As a matter of fact, you know, during the COVID period, some of the international banks really were looking forward to making sure that they push us into default of our loans so that the project will just be dead. And that didn't happen with the help of uh, banks like Afrixim Bank. Aliko Dangote compared oil cartels to mafia stronger than drug cartels, determined to maintain control over the industry. He revealed that these groups use various tactics to try to stop his refinery project. Despite these challenges and attempts by some international banks to push his project into loan default during the COVID-19 pandemic, support from banks like Afrixim Bank helped him persevere. Dangote describing himself as a lifelong fighter emphasized his resilience in overcoming these obstacles. Dangote revealed he has already repaid 2.4 billion US dollar of the 5.5 billion US dollar borrowed for his ambitious Lego based refinery. He also announced plans to diversify into the steel sector, aiming to achieve self sufficiency with Nigerian produced steel. Commissioned on May 10, 2023, 
by then President Muhammadu Buhari just before his term ended, the Dangote refinery took nearly 70 years to complete. As the world's largest single train refinery, it features an integrated distillery system capable of producing a variety of products and petrochemicals, unlike traditional refineries with separate units for each product type. Expected to ease Nigeria's chronic fuel shortages significantly, the refinery stands as Africa's largest. Aliko Dangote advocates for self-reliance and local investment as essential pillars for Africa's economic growth. He believes that the continent's greatness must be cultivated internally rather than relying on outsiders. Dangote emphasizes that domestic investment is vital as it paves the way for attracting foreign investment. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, share and subscribe to the new Africa channel for more exciting future videos.